Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095 Basic Algebra. This is section 8.3. We're going to look at solving systems of linear equations by addition, which is also called the elimination method. Both of these words are synonyms. They're interchangeable when it comes to this uh, method of solving systems of equations. So we recall that solving a system is finding the point at which two lines would intersect. Now, the tool that we're going to look at is the elimination method. And essentially, it follows the concept of uh, the properties of equality. What we do to one side, we do to the other. So if we look at <coughs> applying the addition method, or otherwise known as the elimination method, the first thing we need to do is write the equations in general form, ax plus by equals c. And hopefully, we recall general form for lines. If not, Definitely go back to chapter 6 and review that. Now, in order to use the elimination method, we have to look at the coefficients of our variables. Now, to use the method, we want our coefficients to be the same value, but of opposite signs. So we want them, if, as an example, if this is negative 1, I want my other coefficient to be 1, positive 1. And that's what we have here. If not, we'd have to implore a method to change those coefficients by multiplying through by some number. And we just use that property of equality. What we do to one side, we do to the other. So we can change up the equation to fit whatever we need it to. So once these coefficients are the same value but as opposite signs, and I see that I already have that with x, I'm going to eliminate that variable. And I'm going to eliminate it using addition. And that's why these two terms are used for this method. If they have the opposite sign but the same value of coefficient, we can just add them together to eliminate a variable. Negative x plus x, no more x's. My x was eliminated. 2y plus y would give me 3y. And 4 plus 2 is 6. Now, because what I did to this side, I did to that side, I didn't violate any rules of equality. This is equal to that. And now I can solve for y because I eliminated the x. It's a single variable I can solve for. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and I get y equals 2. Now, to find out what x is, all I have to do is go back to one of my equations. And I'll just put it right in here. What is x if y is 2? Well, what plus 2 is 2? 0 plus 2 is 2. So I find that x would equal 0 for this equation. So I have the ordered pair 0, 2 for this equation, but I want to know that it's a solution to the system. I want to make sure that that point works in both equations. So now I'm going to plug it into this one just to be sure. If this is 0 for my x value, negative 0 is still 0, and 2 times 2 for my y value is 4. Is that equal to 4? Well, 0 plus 4 is, in fact, 4. So this works in both equations. We have a consistent system with the solution 0, 2. These two lines intersect at the point 0, 2, which just happens to be a y-intercept right? when x is 0. All right, let's look at another example. And we'll see it's not going to be as nice as that previous example every time. Here we have two different equations of a line. One of them is kind of in general form, where a is 1 fifth, and b is 3 fifths, and c is 1. So ax plus b or y equals c. This one is not in any particular form, but it's almost in slope intercept. But we want them to be the same. And we know we can apply rules of equality. We've been doing that throughout all of these videos. So you know what? I don't want to work with fractions. So I'm going to eliminate this fraction because it is an equation. So I can multiply through by the least common denominator. Well, in this case, it's 5. There's only one denominator. So I'm going to multiply all terms by 5. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. And what I get, 5x over 5, that reduces to just x, 5 times 3 fifths, the 5's would cancel. It's going to leave me with 3 times that y. And 5 times 1 is 5. And if we look at what we have here, x plus 3y equals 5, a much nicer equation to work with. 
Now, this one here I want to put into general form. So I'm going to add 5x to both sides, bring my x's and y's to one side so it's in general form. So if I add 5x to both sides, I'd be left with a negative 2 on this side. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Now, to an, once they're in the same format, my x's align, my y's align, my numbers align, now I can say, all right, let's eliminate a variable. Which one will be the easiest to eliminate? Well, I need them to meet two criteria. They have to be the same value, but be of opposite sign. Well, if I want to eliminate the x like I did in the last example, they'd have to have the same value. If this one's 5, this one would have to be negative 5. And I could multiply this by negative 5, but what you do to one term, you have to do to all of them so that it obeys that property of equality. But maybe I want to eliminate the y's. And I'm actually going to choose to eliminate the y's here instead of the x's, because we did the x's in the last one. You can choose any variable. Whichever one you feel is going to be the easiest, that's the one you should choose. So I'm going to eliminate the y values, which means these two values have to be the same value of opposite sign. Well, I know if I multiply this by negative 2, it'll be negative 6. Negative 6, positive 6. That's my goal. So I use that property of equality. I'm going to multiply by negative 2. What I do to one side, I do to the other so we don't change its value. And if I distribute that, I'm just going to write it down here. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times 3y is a negative 6y. And we can see that was my goal. And negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Now that we have the same value of opposite sign, I can use the addition method. If I add 5x and negative 2, I get 3x. 6y and negative 6y, no more y's. I've eliminated it using addition. Negative 2 and negative 10 is negative 12. And now I have an equation in one variable. And I can solve for that by dividing both sides by 3. x equals negative 12. Or excuse me, negative 4. 12 divided by 3. x equals negative 4. So now, if I go back to my original equations, because while well, we don't even have to do that, we can do it into either one of these, because they're equivalent. Everything we did to one side, we did to the other. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to clean these up a bit. And if you ever need to refer back, you can always back up the video, right? A tool you don't have the option to use in the classroom. If I look at these two equations, if I know what x is, I can find out what y is. I'm just going to plug it into this one. If x is negative 4, I can add 4 to both sides. So I get 3y equals 5 and 4 is 9. Divide by 3, y equals 3. So when x is negative 4, y equals 3. That's the ordered pair, negative 4, positive 3. I want to make sure it's right. Let's check it in this one right here. So the x value is negative 4. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. 3 is my y value. 3 times 6 is 18 equal to negative 2. Is negative 20 plus 18 equal to negative 2? Yes, it is. I've checked my work. This ordered pair works in both of these, which were derived from both of these. So if I tested it in this one and this one, it would still hold true. So I found the solution using elimination. So uh, this has been section 8.3, solving systems of linear equations by the addition or elimination method. Thank you for watching.